you know, uh, and you know that becomes a really slippery slope. Right. Ultimately, the libertarian principles will say. The government shouldn't be involved in that. Just one of many, many things that the government shouldn't be trying to get in and figure out and 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 uh, confer benefits based on social behaviors. <laughs> so okay, well that's a that was that's an interesting one. Just wanted to check in. Really, did I didn't even put this on the list, but there, <laughs> saw this one this morning. This kid in uh, Fairfax High School, uh, up off the ten there, they. He, he's going to be the prom queen. So this is a gay student, and uh, he, he's uh, been elected by the student body to be the prom queen. And, and uh, again, no, no really, no freedoms are really a bridge. There are some protests, I think, by some of the students that it's a that they're uh, the whole thing was a stunt. It was, you know, it was really a. Oh, it kind of dishonors the prom tradition or whatever, but actually the students prefer, preferred it by a majority, so. Yeah, the students are the ones for whom the uh, tradition is, is kept going. The students should be allowed to elect whoever they want. If they want to elect somebody, if they want to elect the goat who's a mascot prom queen, they should be allowed to. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the way the... the uh, the, the prom or the the school's you know guidelines of you know how they run these uh, these events for the kids as long as it's not uh, you know something uh, that's uh, that's just obviously against the school principles. Now I, I'm thinking differently because there's I can, I went to Catholic grade school high school and they 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 have a lot more power in a private institution like that to to invalidate you know things like elections that are some someone pulls a stunt like that but in in a public high school there's really there's kind of an obligation to uphold uh, somewhat of a you know democratic model of of uh, how how you elect your student presidents and king and queen of the prom and things like that and so if it's a you know tolerant school like that and they, and they voted it and yeah, I think they, they should uphold it. It's not, I know a lot of, so I've heard a couple of comments on the conservative uh, talks about things like this happening in high schools where it's a, they believe that the, that the school is pushing and propagandizing leftist type issues and, and, and uh, defining deviancy down is <laughs> a famous phrase. Uh, I don't see that in this case. And, I don't think it's there's deviance here. I mean, he's a standard gay student. He's saying, "I'm going to wear a, a suit to the prom." I don't know if he's going to no, dance he really with is a prom queen. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, not going to wear a dress. Don't know if he's going to dance with the prom king, but I I don't know. They can always find a way. Of, depends on uh, you know. He's they have some freedoms in what they do. You know, at the prom, I guess. I, I I'm thinking that. This is a, a fairly puritanical uh, country still in many parts of it. So when they see items like that happening out in California, they, a lot of people are very repulsed and they think that the, the, the gay agenda is to take over and, and, and uh, say that you know, being gay is, is, is equal to being straight and, in, in, uh, and try to force gay lifestyle and teach, all, teach it to your kids. And, that's like another slippery slope, huh? Forcing gay lifestyle. I, I feel <laughs> bad for gay people just for being born gay. I mean, it's you, you uh, you're all of a sudden ostracized by everybody, and all of a sudden your uh, potential mates drop down from 50 percent of the population down to five percent. Mm. And uh, it's just not anything anybody would sign up for voluntarily. They they can't help being gay. Yeah. So let them be gay, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. Let's not uh, make it such a they big deal. Deliberately want to do that to themselves. Yeah. Well. On the other hand, I don't understand exactly how how gayness is perpetuated in the genetic strain when uh, it's the first thing that would genetically be uh, you know ruled out. <laughs> yeah. So for some reason, it's a uh, and. I, I don't, for lack of a better word, it's a mutation, but it's not a, maybe there's a better word, it's just a, it's a difference, 
and you call it, in the general in genetic talk, I think mutation can mean any change. It's basically any uh, characteristic that's different, and and some of those characteristics get selected for reproduction, and some don't. Obviously, gay people are highly less likely to reproduce, but. It's, uh, it perpetuates for whatever reason. They don't know why from the things I've read. Um, and and uh, I, I think it's better. We, I like the tolerance. When I was growing up, we were highly intolerant in high school of gay people. And so they basically, the ones that were suspected of being gay were just basically stayed in the closet and did not, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, show it in are. any way. You know, because the guys are. Yeah, I think the reason is is that guys, as they they're maturing, they becoming. You know, from going from boys to men, they still have standard fears that smaller kids have, and so there there's this stigma of appearing to be weak in any way. And when they see kids that have effeminate characteristics, they they uh, want to show that they're against that because they're trying to become you know a, a macho man, and that and that's part of the reason they. There's this kind of revulsion that is felt, but that that can be discouraged in the kids by the administration and, and by the kids' parents themselves. I think in general we're becoming a lot more tolerant of uh, gay Absolutely. people. I think it's a good thing. You know, I've, I remember making all the jokes just like with the rest of the guys, and and I, I, re- yeah, me too. I, I kind of regret that that uh, you know some of the the kids that were gay or, or probably were were gay were you know very much uh, teased and. And intimidated, they don't, they don't deserve that. So uh, I'm glad. Maybe this is a good thing. It's one of those, uh, you know, pluses for tolerance, and hopefully we can come to kind of a way to work, live together, where we don't have to have this intimidation and just, and uh, you don't have to buy into the whole lifestyle. And you don't have to be forced to, you know, read all the details and about uh, what what gay people do. But there's got to be a a way to, to, to live together, and I think this is a step forward, at least from a libertarian standpoint, it looks like a good, a positive step. It's none of my business what you do in your bedroom, <laughs> or with whom. Right, and it's especially not the government's business. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> okay, well, I've dragged you on a little bit long today, uh, Greg, but I think we got some uh, good points out, and uh, I'm glad we slammed on that uh, that drug uh, White House uh, drug office uh, sham and try to get the word out on that. I'll promote that today looking out on the blogs and try to try to uh, refute that any of the blogs that are talking positive about that report. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're reporting on Prozac for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Greg. Thanks again. Great job. Uh, have a great weekend up there in Mammoth Lakes and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Great. Thanks very much, Joey. Okay.